Hi, today I want to talk about the ESP32 and MQTT and today the second part or how to subscribe to a MQTT server and how to receive the published messages. So let's start with the MQTT protocol and some basics. First of all, to subscribe to a MQTT service, we have to connect from our MQTT client to our MQTT server and the MQTT server have to send the connection acknowledgement back to our client. Then we can send the subscribe message and the MQTT server have to respond with the subscribe acknowledgement. And then after a while we're waiting for a message. We have to send some kind of watchdog command to keep our connection established. So we send a ping request and get a ping response back. And then after a while we receive the published message and then we can do with the message whatever we want. For secure MQTT, the most server implements two options, maybe like Cloud MQTT or the test server from IoT Eclipse or even the sandbox from the Mosquito project. All of them implements the raw MQTT via TLS or SSL or also the secure MQTT connection via WebSocket, like I talk about in the first part of this video. Now let's have a look at the uh, implementation. On one side we have our ESP32 hardware and we use the crypto accelerator with our implementation to implement the secure hash algorithms and the encryption. And we use the ESP IDF as a wrapper and also we use the libraries from the free real-time operation system and as mentioned the Eclipse PAYO embedded C client for MQTT and we also use the embed TLS implementation together with the crypto accelerator. And here we see a speed up time-lapse video with some tests I've made with the MQTT service from cloud MQTT and I sent some messages to the server with uh, the Python Payo client I use for my Ubuntu operation system. First I start with one client but later in the video I use three clients in parallel to send messages to our ESP32 via the cloud MQTT service. But I only use the free version of cloud MQTT so my bandwidth is very limited by default. So let's have a look into the code. First we start with the main program. It's very simple. We just initialize our Wi-Fi connection and then create a task for our MQTT client. So let's look in the MQTT task. We connect to our Wi-Fi as mentioned. Then we start the MQTT network connection to our MQTT server and we define our MQTT server here in the block. I just take the configuration given by Cloud MQTT and I can use either the TLS port or the WebSocket port and I can switch the WebSocket on or off. That later we can see the implementation. So we start with the network connection, then we connect the MQTT client with some buffers, then we set up our client data and our MQTT setup structure and we connect our client to the MQTT server. And if the connection is successfully, then we send the subscribe message and the topic we want to subscribe. I want all messages start with the ESP32 topic and then everything, maybe some sensor data. And, and I want the quality of service with a level of zero. So we don't need any acknowledgement for the published messages. And then everything we do is yielding and waiting for the next message. So let's see the implementation. First, let's start with the network connection. 
we implement in our embed MQTT part. So as mentioned in the last video, we do the SSL connection and so on and do a handshake. And then we can switch between the WebSocket implementation and the raw MQTT implementation. So for the WebSocket implementation, we send the GET request. And I also have implemented a small Python script we can use via the compiling. So we generate a special MQTT UUID every time we compile our. So we can have a look at the result. So we have to open the header file and then also a small header file with our UUID that's generated by this Python script. So let's go back to our implementation and our network connection and the WebSocket handshake. So now we have a unique UUID for our client. And then also we testing the hash that's sent back to our client. So the server from maybe cloud MQTT generate a hash with our client UUID and we can check if the hash is implemented correctly. And no man in the middle attack is taking place while we communicate with our SSL or TLS server. So that's the WebSocket part. And if you don't use WebSocket, this is all um, skipped. So and then we can have a look in the message reading. If we want a message, we have to listen to our socket and wait for the message that's transferred. And if we want to read a message, I implemented a buffered message reading function. And in this function, we also set some timeout for our connection. And if the timeout occurs, then we can do some watchdog ping pong request as mentioned in the MQTT part. And here we will decide if our message is transferred via WebSocket or plain SSL. And if so, we receive our message in the WebSocket buffer or in the plain MQTT buffer. And if so, if it's the WebSocket part, we also have removed the WebSocket frame from our MQTT message. And if it's plain, we don't have to do this. And I have also implemented some kind of debug output if needed. So that's everything I want to show you today. So the code is just a proof of concept, but you can all download the source code from GitHub. But this is just the start of the project. And if so, you can also use this as your implementation and share with us your improvements. So I hope you enjoy the video and also learn something today. And as always, thank you for watching and bye bye.